Welcome back, little ones. Welcome back, family members. Glad you all can make it back to another glorious day that the Lord has made. I hope when you got up this morning, you gave Father God thanks. Give him all the honor, praise, and glory because it belonged to him and only him. I love you all with the love of the Lord. It is a beautiful day if I say so myself. We are so blessed that we woke up this morning. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. I love you all with the love of the Lord, and Father God loves you more. Let us get right into prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we come here this morning to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A heartfelt thank you. And we can do nothing, absolutely nothing by ourselves. Father God is all you. We say thank you. And we know thou art sufficient for us all. We thank you, Father God. Thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you. Father God, we know that you're the one and only true God. Thy name is faithful and true. There's no God before you, no God besides you, and there will be no God after you. Glory be to God. You are omnipotent. You reign it. You are in charge. You always have been. You always will be, Father God. And ye have the victory. The victory is already won. It's only a matter of time. And it's your will, your way, your time. And, and you and us and we and you, we have the victory. You and us and we and you, there ain't nothing we can't do. And you and us, you strengthen us, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you please help us to guide our eyes, heart, mind, and soul at all times. Because evil's waiting to pounce. Even at the door, and we will not let him in. Oh, no, we won't let him in. We strive for holiness and holiness only. And I'll pro we proclaim Jesus Christ in here alone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So there's no space in our home, in our body, in our mind, in our soul, not in any part of our soul, no parts of our body whatsoever. In our home either, a holy, pure, righteous, knowing no sin in life was given for us to have life. So we don't have time for evil one at all. No time. A holy, pure, righteous, nor no sin life was given for us to have life, so our lives don't belong to us, and our vessels are holy, because our Father which are in heaven is holy, and these holy vessels belong to the Holy Spirit, and He alone, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, we ask that you please bless all the listeners, bless those in the body of Christ, our family members, loved ones, and friends. We plead the blood of Jesus over all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, our family members, loved ones, and friends. We ask that you have protection around the listeners, Father God. Oh, wow, family members, loved ones, friends, I know our home and our belongings and possessions. And Father God, we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, we pray for all to come to the truth. If they have given their life to you, they may they give it to you today. I don't know what we're waiting on, but uh, we need to get it right. And it's time now. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. We wish as, we, as you wish, Father God, for none to perish. But we know... That they have free will. And I pray in, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that they do not allow their free will to cause them to perish. We don't have time. We not we don't no man knows the day or the hour, but we know that what's what time we're in. You know what times you're in. If you have even the simplest of a mind, you know what time we're in. Okay? Common sense tell you what time we're in. I don't care if you if you're not anointed, you know what time we're in. Okay? And if you if you say you don't, then I don't know where you're from. But you're but you definitely, uh, you're not of God. You don't know what time we end. <clears throat> and if you haven't given your life to Christ, please do so. Please do so. I'm begging thee because I know what is to come upon this earth. And I know that men's hearts are going to fail them. And when I say men's heart, don't think it's just a man we're talking about. We're talking about all. All. Children, men, women. All hearts are going to fail because of what's coming upon this earth. I'm telling you all to give your life to Christ today. I'm begging thee. Because God loves you so much, he is waiting upon you. His arm is still outstretched. He's waiting on you. What are you waiting for? You're not owed anything. Give your life to Christ before it's too late. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Wake up before it's too late. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that all that have fallen away, that they repent and turn from their wicked ways and receive you today. As their Lord and Savior. Father God, we thank you for your, you being the Most High, the Holy One of Israel, our Heavenly Father, Creator of the heavens and the earth. We thank you, Father God, for your outstretched arm. We thank you for your long suffering, not easy to anger, traits we all need. We know that you're the one and only true God. We know that you're a pure, holy, righteous God, the one and only, the Almighty. Thank you for your wondrous works and the works that you do, the wondrous works you do for the children of men. Thank you for your gifts you've given us, Father God, the gift of life. We're not promised today. We're not promised tomorrow. But you let us wake up today. We're so very grateful and thankful, Father God. We say thank you. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you for your long suffering and not easy to anger. Traits that we all need. Thank you, Father God, for your grace and mercy. If not for your grace and mercy, we would not be here. Thank you, Father God, for 
the gift of the only begotten Son, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, for the remission of our sin, paid in full. Though we know we need to work out our own salvation in fear and trembling of the Most High. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. We thank you, Father God, for your holy angels that watch over us day and night, even while we work and play and while we at rest. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, also known as the Comforter, that guides us to all truth. We thank you, Father God. We can never say enough thank you. And may we all have love in our hearts. Love, because Father God is love. Forgive, because you cannot get into the kingdom of heaven with unforgiveness in your heart. Not only forgive, forget. Forget. Because for, the same way Father God has forgiven us through our faults and our transgressions, why shouldn't we for, for our fellow man? We must. We must do it. Father God has uh, commandments, and you also have uh, standards. Holiness only. That's the only thing that matters. Love your neighbor as you love yourself, and love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Please do these things. And Father God, help us. Help your children, Father God. We need you. And Father God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you comfort any and all that are in need of comfort. Many are in need of comfort. Many have lost loved ones. Many continue to lose loved ones. I hope they wake up before it's too late. He's calling on you, and he's strengthening you. And if you keep on living the foul life that you're living, living in this world and doing the things of this world, I mean, we live here, but we're not of here. You can't continually put your whole life into this world and think that you're going to have God. No, no, you're not going to have both. He's a jealous God, rightfully so. He gave his only begotten son so that you may have life, and not just have life, but have it more abundantly. So let us do what's right. Hallelujah. Do what is right. And Father God, we... We thank you, Father God, for all that you do have done and will do. And we love you. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. God bless you, Father God. We praise our holy name. You're worthy to be praised each and every day, all day. We glorify the holy name to God. Be all the honor, praise, and glory. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And every member of my body belong to you and only you, Father God. We say use us for your glory and your glory alone. And we love you with an everlasting love and will never forsake you. And we seal this prayer to you, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with a holy kiss. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray, amen and hallelujah. Let us not stop there. If you haven't given your life to Christ, you have the opportunity to do so right here, right now. And please do so. Have you heard the good news? The good news is Jesus Christ. And he's coming back. Not only he coming back, he's coming back for a spotless, blameless, unblemished bride. If you're ready to do what is right and accept Jesus Christ... As your Lord and Savior, then say this prayer. Don't say this prayer if you don't mean it. Say it if you mean it, that you truly mean it, that you're going to seek Him in sincerity and truth with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Then please say this prayer. I pray to you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I am sorry. And please forgive me for my sins against your word. I believe you died on the cross and shed your holy sinless blood and was risen from the dead. Three days later, after being crucified, help me to seek eternal life, live a life of holiness, a life pleasing and acceptable to you. Help me to study your word and obey it and repent daily. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now please repent for your sins. That means turn from your wicked ways. You're not going to do them anymore. You're going to strive for holiness. You're not going to sin on purpose. Okay? And you ought to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you in your walk with Christ. And remember, it's not a religion. It's a personal relationship between you and the Lord thy God, a commitment and love. I'll say that again. Your walk with Christ. God bless you in your walk with Christ. Remember, it's not a religion. It's a personal relationship, a commitment and love between you and the Lord thy God. Okay? We in the body of Christ, we welcome you. Welcome my new brother and sister to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. May we edify one another, pray with and pray for one another, pray without ceasing, fast, bear one another's burdens, give love and charity, because they cover a multitude of sin. Glory be to God. Welcome, my new brother and sister, to the body of Christ. We love you, and God loves you more. God bless you. Let us go right into Scripture. Hallelujah. Today, Father God gave me uh, 1 Kings chapters 18 to 20. 
So 18, 19, and 20, and I shall read them. Hallelujah. 1 Kings chapter 18. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, shew thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to shew himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so, when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets, and hid them by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou that my lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go tell thy lord. Behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I sinned, that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said, He is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation, that they found thee not. And now thus thou sayest, Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid in hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, Go, tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely shew thy myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubled Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people, and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are four hundred and fifty men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, small g, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answered by fire. Let him be God, capital G. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, and put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them, and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god, small g. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or poor adventure, he sleepeth, and must be awakened. And they cried aloud, and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lances, till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass, when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he re repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullocks in pieces, 
and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the book Kedron, Kishon, and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time he said that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Chapter 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, small g, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down on a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and touched him, and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose, and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave, and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, what doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out and stood in the entering end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him, and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Haziel shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, 
all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So he departed thence, and found Elijah the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelfth, and Elijah passed by him, and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen, and ran after Elijah, and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said, Go unto him, go back again, for what have I to, done to thee? And he returned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose, and went after Elijah, and ministered unto him. Chapter 20. And Behadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his hosts together, and there were thirty and two kings with him, and horses and chariots. And he went up and besieged Samaria, and warred against it. And he said... And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city, and said unto them, unto him, Thus saith Benadad, Thy silver and thy gold is mine, thy wives also and thy children, even the goodliest are mine. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine in all that I have. And the messengers came again and said, Thus speaketh Benadad, saying, Although I have sent unto thee, saying, Thou shalt deliver me thy silver and thy gold and thy wives and thy children. Yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this time, and they shall search thine house, and the servant in the houses of thy servants, and it shall be that whosoever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hand and take it away. Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land, and said, Mark, I pray you, and see how this man seeketh mischief, for he sent unto me for my wives, and for my children, and for my silver, and for my gold, and I denied him not. And all the elders and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto him, nor consent. Wherefore he said unto the messengers within that, Tell my lord the king, All that thou didst send for to thy servant at the first I will do, but this thing I may not do. And the messengers departed, and brought him word again. And many that sent unto him, and said, The gods do so unto me, small g, and more also, if the dust of Samaria shall suffice for handfuls for all the people that follow me. And the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, let not him that girded on his harness boast himself as he that put it off. And it came to pass, when Benadad heard this message as he was drinking, he and the kings in the pavilion, that he said unto his servants, Set yourselves in array. And they set themselves in array against the city. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab king of Israel, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver into thine hand this day, and... Thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Ahab said, By whom? And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Even by the young men of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, Who shall order the battle? And he answered, Thou. And he answered, Thou. Then he numbered the young men of the princes of the provinces, and they were two hundred and thirty-two. And after them he numbered all the people, even all the children of Israel, being seven thousand. And they went out at noon. But Benadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilions, he and the kings, the thirty and two kings that helped him. And the young men of the princes of the provinces went out first. And Benadad sent out, and they told him, saying, There are men come out of Samaria. And he said, Whether they be out, come out for peace, take them alive. Or whether they be come out for war, take them alive. So these young men of the princes of the provinces came out of the city, and the army which followed them. And they slew every one his man, and the Syrians fled, and Israel pursued them. And Benadad, the king of Syria, escaped on a horse with the with the horsemen. And the king of Israel went out and smote the horses and chariots, and slew the Syrians with a great slaughter. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said unto him, Go strengthen thyself, and mark, and see what thou doest. For at the return of the year the king of Syria will come up against thee. And the servants of their king and the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Their gods are gods of the hills, therefore they were stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And do this thing, take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their room. And number thee an army like the army that thou hast lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot. And we will fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And he hearkened unto their voice and did so. And it came to pass at the return of the year that Benadad numbered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. 
And the children of Israel were numbered and were all present and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids. But the Syrians filled the country. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thine hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And they pitched one over against the other seven days. And so it was that in the seventh day the battle was joined, and the children of Israel slew of the Syrians and a hundred thousand footmen in one day. But the rest fled to Aphek into the city, and there were, and there a wall fell upon twenty and seven thousand of the men that were left. And then it had fled and came into the city, into an inner chamber. And his servants said unto him, Behold now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Let us, I pray thee, put sackcloth on our loins and ropes upon our heads, and go out to the king of Israel. Peradventure he will save thy life. So they girded sackcloth on their loins, and put ropes on their heads, and came to the king of Israel, and said, Thy servant Benadad saith, I pray thee, let me live. And he said, Is he yet alive? He is my brother. Now the men did diligently observe whether anything would come from him, and did hastily catch it. And they said, Thy brother Benadad. Then he said, Go ye, bring him. Then Benadad came forth to him, and he caused him to come up into the chariot. And Benadad said unto him, the cities which my father took from thy father I will restore, and thou shalt make streets for thee in Damascus, as my father made in Samaria. Then he said, Ahab, I will send thee away with this covenant. So he made a covenant with him and sent him away. And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbor in the word of the Lord, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. Then he said unto him, Because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. Then he found another man and said, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man smote him, so that in smiting he was wounded. He wounded him. So the prophet departed and waited for the king by the way, and despised himself with ashes upon his face. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king, and he said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle, and behold, a man turned aside. I brought a man unto me, and said, Keep this man. If by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be, thyself has decided it. And he hasted, and took the ashes away from his face. And the king of Israel discerned him that he was of the prophets. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, because thou hast let Go out of thy hand, a man whom I appointed to utter destruction. Therefore thy life shall go for his life, and thy people for his people. And the king of Israel went to his house, heavy and displeased, and came to Samaria. Amen. Amen. In our regular reading, we're still in the book of Joshua. And I was yesterday I was supposed to read uh, chapter eight, uh, 17. And today would be chapter 18. I didn't get around to chapter 17 yesterday, so we shall do it today. We'll read chapter 17 and chapter 18 of the book of Joshua. Manasseh's land west of the Jordan River, and Joshua gives out the rest of the land. Amen. Chapter 17 of the book of Joshua. Manasseh's land west of the Jordan River. Manasseh was Joseph's oldest son, and Mekir was Manasseh's oldest son. Mekir had a son named Gilead, and some of his descendants had already received the regions of Gilead and Bashan because they were good warriors. The other clans of the Manasseh tribe descended from Gilead's sons, Eliza, Helech, Israel, Shechem, Hepha, and Shemida. The following is the description of the land they received. Hepha's son, Zelophehad, did not have any sons, but he did have five daughters, Mala, Noah, Hugla, Milcah, and Terza. One day the clans that were descendants of Zelophehad's five daughters went to the priests, Eleazar, Joshua, and the leaders of Israel. The people of these lands said, The Lord told Moses to give us land, just as he gave land to our relatives. Joshua followed the Lord's instructions and gave land to these five clans, as he had given land to the five clans that had descended from Hepha's brothers. So Manasseh's land west of the Jordan River was divided into ten parts. The land of the Manasseh tribe went from its northern border with the Asher tribe south to Mikmetheth, which is to the east of Shechem. 
The southern border started there, but curved even farther south to include the people who lived around Tapua Spring. The town of Tapua was on Manasseh's border with Ephraim. Although the land around Tapua belonged to Manasseh, the town itself belonged to Ephraim. Then the border went west to the Canaan Gorge and ran along the northern edge of the gorge to the Mediterranean Sea. The land south of the gorge belonged to Ephraim. And even though there were a few towns that belonged to Ephraim north of the gorge, the land north of the gorge belonged to Manasseh. The west border of Manasseh was the Mediterranean Sea, and the tribe shared a border with the Asher tribe on the northwest and with the Issachar tribe on the northeast. Manasseh was supposed to have the following towns with their surrounding villages inside the borders of Issachar's and Asher's tribal lands. Bethlehem, Elium, Endor, Kianach, Megadore and Dor, which is also called Naphat, but the people of Manasseh could not capture these towns, so the Canaanites kept on living in them. When the Israelites grew stronger, they made the Canaanites in these towns work as their slaves, though they never did force them to leave. One day, the Joseph's tribes, the Joseph tribes came to Joshua and asked, "Why didn't you give us more land? The Lord has always been kind to us, and we have too many people for this small region." Joshua replied. If you have so many people that you don't have enough room in the hill country of Ephraim, then go into the forest that belong to the Perizzites and the Repha. Clear out the trees and make room for, your, your, for yourselves there. Excuse me, Lord. Even if we do that, they answered, there still won't be enough land for us in the hill country, and we can't move down into Jezreel Valley, because the Canaanites who live in Bethlehem and in other parts of the valley have iron chariots. Your tribes do not have, your tribes do have a lot of people, Joshua admitted. I'll give you more land. Your tribes are powerful, so you can have the rest of the hill country. But it's a forest, and you'll have to cut down the trees and clear the land. You also have Jezreel Valley. Even though the Canaanites there are strong and have iron chariots, you can force them to leave the valley. Chapter 18, Joshua gives out the rest of the land. After Israel had captured the land, they met at Shiloh and, sent, and set up the sacred tent. There were still seven tribes without any land. So Joshua told the people, the Judah tribe has already settled in its land in the south, and Joshua tribes have settled in their land in the north. The tribes of Gad, Reuben, and East Manasseh already had the land that the Lord's servant Moses gave them east of the Jordan River. And the people of Levi won't get a single large region of the land like the other tribes. Instead, they will serve the Lord as priests. But the rest of you haven't done a thing to take over any land. The Lord God, who, has wor who was worshipped by your ancestors, has given you the land. And it's now time for you to go ahead and settle there. Seven tribes still don't have any land. Each of these tribes should choose three men, and I'll send them to explore the remaining land. They will divide it into seven regions, write a description of each region, and bring these descriptions back to me. I will find, I will find out from the Lord our God what region each tribe should get. Just before the men left camp, Joshua repeated their orders. Explore the land and write a description of it. Then come back to Shiloh, and I will find out from the Lord how to divide the land. The men left and went across the land, dividing it into seven regions. They wrote down a description of each region, town by town, and returned to Joshua at the camp at Shiloh. Joshua found out from the Lord how to divide the land, and he told the tribes what the Lord had decided. Benjamin was the first tribe chosen to receive land. The region for its clans lay between the Judah tribe on the south and the Joseph tribe on the north. Benjamin's northern border started at the Jordan River and went up the ridge north of Jericho, then on the west into the hill country as far as the Bethaven Desert. But from there it went to Luz, which is now called Bethel. The border ran along the ridge south of Luz, then went to Adaroth Horek, and on as far as and as far as the north as the mountain south of Lower Beth Horon. At that point it turned south and became the western border. It went as far south as Kiriath Dale, a town in Judah now called Kiriath Jerim. Benjamin's southern border started at the edge of Kiriath Jerim and went east to the ruins and on to Nephtua Spring. From there it went to the bottom of the hill at the northern end of Rephaim Valley. The other side of this hill faces Hinnom Valley, which is on the land that slopes south of Jerusalem. The border went down through Hinnom Valley until it reached Engregal. At Enrigal, the border curved north and went to Enshemesh, and on the east to Gililoth, which is across the valley from Adamon Pass. 
Then it went down onto the monument, the monument, excuse me, of Bohan, who went on to the Reuben tribe. The border ran along the hillside north of Beth Araba, then went down into the Jordan River Valley. Inside the valley, it went south as far as the northern hillside of Beth Hogla. The last section of the border went from there to the northern end of the Dead Sea, at the mouth of the Jordan River. The Jordan River itself was Benjamin's eastern border. These were the borders of Benjamin's tribal land, where the clans of Benjamin lived. One region of Benjamin's tribal land had twelve towns with their surrounding villages. These towns were Jericho, Beth Hogla, Emek Kizes, Beth Ereba, Zimmerman, Beth Avon, Pera, Ufra, Chefa, Aminium, Ophi, Ophni, and uh, Giba. In the other region, there were the following fourteen. Towns with their surrounding villages Gibeon, Rema, Bira, Mizpeh, Shifra, Moza, Rechem, Ephil, Sherla, Zila, Hilblad, Gibeah, Hirabjerim, Hirabjerim, and Jerusalem, which is called also Jebusite Town. These regions are the tribal lands of Benjamin. Amen. Oh, my Lord. God's willing, we come back tomorrow to chapter 19 of the book of Joshua, Simeon's land. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Tell your loved ones that you love them. Please don't forget to tell them about Father God, who is Jesus Christ in the flesh. Father God is the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit came down that we got to mighty, and that Holy Spirit dwells within us. If we seek Him in sincerity and truth with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, we shall find Him. You all love, have love in your hearts, okay? God is love. And so as He's forgiven us, we need to forgive others. Don't have any kind of err in your heart about someone. If you have any kind of problem with someone, please take it out with them. Tell them you're sorry. And if you find out that somebody have um, any kind of issue with you, forgive them. We bless, we don't curse, okay? Even if they curse you, don't, don't curse them, bless them. Pray for people that use you uh, deceitfully, because there are people that use you deceitfully. Have love in your hearts. Get food in your house, too. Food and water. We, we don't know, you know, if and when they're going to run out. So have food and water in your homes. I know. Um, stay close to God. Give your life to Christ if you haven't. Please do. Don't wait. We not promise tomorrow. When you close your eyes today, where you gonna wake up at? Think about that. Where will you wake up at? I love you all with the love of the Lord. You all have yourselves a beautiful, blessed day. God, I love you, and God love you more. Bye, little one. Bye, family members. God bless you. Bye bye.